Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Christmas Spectacular. You have joined us on a very special Sunday. We are so honored that you are here tonight. How many of you are excited about this performance? Well, let me tell you that this is going to be something that you're not going to forget as we celebrate the greatest story ever told, the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We have a lot of incredible things in store for you all tonight. We have dancers, aerialists, live animals, a message from pastor, and an exciting closer you will not want to miss. We ask that everyone remain seated until the very end and keep the aisles clear for any surprises along the way. Absolutely. And join us as we celebrate Jesus this Christmas. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the Christmas Spectacular. centuries in darkness, all of creation waited eagerly with a growing hope for a savior. And throughout the ages, this hope could not dim as men and women of God saw brief glimpses of the divine, their spirits lifted by an unrelenting expectation of something magnificent that was yet to come. They wrote of a star that would come forth from Jacob, for unto us a child is born, the Prince of Peace. He shall be called Emmanuel, and his throne would be established forever. And now in a place least expected, hope has arrived. Imagine the scene as the celestial curtain was pulled aside with angels singing and radiant beams of God's love cascading downward. It is something more than anyone could ever hope or even dream. The spectacular arrival of the Messiah, Jesus Christ.
In Nazareth, Joseph the carpenter has been introduced to Mary, a girl from the village. With the blessing of her father, Mary and Joseph are now betrothed, promised to each other in marriage. Soon after, when Mary was alone, God sent an angel to speak to her. Mary, do not be afraid, for you have been chosen. You will give birth to a son, and you are to name him Jesus. He will be supreme, and he'll be known as the Son of the Most High. His kingdom will reign forever. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will cover you. The holy child you will give birth to will be called the Son of God. Nothing is impossible with God. Upon hearing this, Mary treasured and pondered all these things in her heart. Mary, did you know that your baby on water Mary did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new in this child will soon deliver you oh man did you know oh, the blind will see and the deaf will hear and the dead will live again nations did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect land in the sleeping child you're holding is the grave sing 
And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was, while they were there, it became time for the baby to be born. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. The greatest gift ever given to mankind was a child born in a humble stable, a savior who would bring God's magnificent light into this darkened world. The birth of Jesus, the Son of God, was caused for a wonderful and glorious celebration, and those very first gifts of Christmas were given over 2,000 years ago, coming from a most unexpected source. For far from Israel, 
wise men in the East were preparing for a great journey to see with their own eyes the Messiah, the Prince of Peace. And they would bring more than just their praise and adulation. Along the journey, they brought their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The first gifts of Christmas. The story of how these stargazers discovered their destiny is extraordinary. For the revelation of Christ's birth was a message written within the stars, a celestial mystery unlocked by these wise men. Their passion was to study the heavens. As they watched and charted those distant lights that ignited the atmosphere with splendorous wonder. And yet something was about to happen that would change them forever. For on this night, a new star appeared in the skies above, beckoning them, heralding the arrival of a new king born. Yet it was not just any king, or even a great king. It was the King of Kings. And so these wise men set out on unimagined paths, humbly following the star to their newborn king. The heavens now blazed a message for eternity had whispered its welcome. Come, come see Emmanuel, God with us. <laughs> Nearby, there were shepherds watching over their flocks of sheep by night something they had done so many other nights before this. As they settled down for the evening, all was calm. And by all appearances, the day would end as any other ordinary day would. But unbeknownst to them, a wondrous moment would soon take place. A moment that had been planned since the beginning of time. God had now drawn near. And for these shepherds, this night was about to become anything but ordinary. Sing high. 
Wise men and shepherds alike were filled with great joy, bowing down to worship the King of Kings. Generations of the hopeful had waited in anticipation for this very moment. The Messiah, promised long ago, was here. As the good news spread across the countryside, the world would never be the same. Today, wise men still look to the skies, for we know that once more the Savior will return. And once more there will be great joy as every knee shall bow to worship Jesus, the Messiah, the King of Kings. Yeah. 
Said the night wind to the little lake Oh, do you see what I see? Way up in the sky, little lake Do you see what I see? invite you to stand with us as we honor and worship the name above all names, the beautiful, wonderful name of Jesus. He didn't want heaven without us, so Jesus, you brought heaven down. Great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is! What a wonderful name it is! The name of Jesus Christ. 
Aren't you thankful for that name? Aren't you thankful for that name? The wonder, the wonder of his name. The prophet Isaiah in the ninth chapter said, his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And he's here. Wherever his name is praised and glorified, he shows up. There was something that was said by a president in years gone by when the first man landed on the moon. He said in a speech that he gave the president at that time, he said, the planning of human feet on the moon is the greatest event in human history. And I'd like to respectfully disagree. The greatest event in human history was when God Almighty placed his feet in a manger in Bethlehem and came to us when we could not reach him, when we could not get to him. All the way from the ivory palaces of heaven to a barnyard in Bethlehem. Many people sneer, the atheists, the unbelievers, and it's okay. They sneer at the thought of a virgin birth. They think we're crazy gathered in a room like this worshiping tonight. A virgin birth is impossible, but the whole Christmas message is centered around a verse that says, with God, nothing shall be impossible. Nothing, nothing shall be impossible. But you have to understand concerning the virgin birth, it's totally interwoven with everything that we believe, everything that brings our salvation. As a matter of fact, if there's no virgin birth, let me put it like this, no virgin birth, no deity. No God, no deity, no sinless life, no sinless life, then no sacrificial death, no sacrificial death, no resurrection, no resurrection, no salvation. But Jesus came to earth so that we could go to heaven. The infinite one became an infant. He was born of a virgin so that we could be born again. He was born a king. We didn't elect him and nobody can impeach him. He's king of kings and he's Lord of lords. When I think about the cross, when I think about Jesus, I don't just think about a cradle. The, the real story of Christmas is not just a cradle, but it includes a cross and it includes a crown. The cradle was the virgin birth. The cross is where the man, the God man, where, where God sent a package to earth, the gift that was wrapped, the gift of divinity wrapped in humanity. And on the cross, he died. He died and he bled for me and for you to cleanse us, to forgive us. But three days later comes the crown when he rose from the dead. And he said to every one of you tonight, who've lost a loved one, who will have an empty seat at the table, who've lost a mother, a father, a son, a brother, someone near and dear to you. I came that you might have life and have eternal life through my name, and I have crowned you with this thing that is available to you called salvation, forgiveness, cleansing, a new start, a new beginning. I conclude with Acts chapter 4. The wonder of his name. 
neither is there any other name given unto men whereby we can be saved but the name of Jesus. Oh, the beauty of that name. Oh, I'm so thankful for that name. Would you sing? Can, can we break the program up just a minute? Would you sing Jesus? Jesus. Jesus. There's just That name, Master, Savior, Master, He saved Jesus, like the friends after the rain. Sing it, church. o'clock service there was a precious man and his wife here came all the way from Atlanta we met them this last year during COVID and everything that was going on they reached out to us and they came to church service and were so greatly touched but they lost their 20 something year old son and I looked over during the play and they were singing, we were singing the carols that you've seen. And I watched that man and that woman walk, walking through still the darkest days of their life. Tears began to stream down their face because there's something about the name of Jesus that can comfort even the most broken heart. And look, we're all just people. We're all struggling. We're all going through things in our life. But our message tonight is Jesus. Jesus cares. Jesus loves you. He's never given up on you. You may have given up on yourself. You may be addicted. You may have secrets and pain and brokenness in your family and in your life. But just call on Jesus. He'll never turn you away. There's nothing you've done that he can't forgive. And I'm going to ask you, all of you in this room, those of you in the overflow, and those of you watching online, I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer behind me. The wonder of his name. Let's call on his name right now. Pray these words. Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you were born of a virgin in a cradle. And I believe later you carried a cross all the way up Calvary's hill. You bled and you died for my sins. And I believe three days later, you rose from the dead and I can have life. I can have freedom. I can have peace. I can have joy because of your wonderful name, the name of Jesus. I receive it all in your name. What a beautiful name. What a lovely name, the name of Jesus. Give him praise.
Text a family member because you will not want to miss our last Christmas Spectacular showing today. Well, if today you made the choice to be saved, to receive Jesus Christ as Lord, we want to say congratulations, but we also invite you to join us in the Connections Lounge right outside these doors. We want to get connected with you and get you some next steps on your journey. But we've got a lot of cool things coming up in December. Next week, we've got our kids' choir leading us in worship. It's going to be so, so special. And our Christmas Eve candlelight service is right around the corner, and we hope you will join us. Thank you again for being here tonight. We hope you have a wonderful, safe evening. God bless you, and Merry Christmas.